Days after Democrats nominated Joe Biden at an all-digital convention like no other in U.S. history, Republicans will be looking to energize their own base. The Republicans will from Monday hold their own part-digital, part-in-person convention to officially nominate President Donald Trump as their 2020 candidate. The four-day convention, running from the 24th of August to the 27th, will center around the theme of honoring the great American story and will feature everyday Americans who will testify that the president has positively affected their lives. This year, no more than 336 delegates. The 2016 convention had more than 2,400 and will gather in person in Charlotte, North Carolina, to conduct the roll call vote and formally nominate Trump, who faced little opposition in the primary season. Professor John Stremlau now joins us on the line for some insights into this much-anticipated political showcase as the country gears for elections. Professor, a very good evening to you. It's always great chatting to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome to The Globe. Thank you very much. Good evening. It's only a few months to go before the much-contested November the 4th election. So what's your analysis of, uh, the, un of the events unfolding? <laughs> well, it's uh, an election unlike any other I've ever seen in America, and the Democrats successfully defined it last week as a test between the hopes of a pluralistic, diverse country that belongs to all who live there versus the ethnic nationalism and fear generated by Donald Trump in 2016 and that he's planning to showcase in 2020. There's the added factor that he does have the power of the presidency and will do anything he can to steal this election because he didn't win a popular vote in 2016 and he's, un he's certainly not going to win it from all the polling evidence so far in uh, 2020, but he could win in our peculiar uh, electoral college that uh, American uh, presidents are selected by. I mean, the jury's still out jury's on still whose out side uh, the scales will tip with regards to the popularity vote and as well as the electoral college vote. But then we've seen uh, Joe Biden being uh, warmly welcomed by the delegates themselves, by the Democratic supporters and even beyond the United States. So is this perhaps an indication that he is well on cause on his uh, on his way to the White House? Well, I, I appeared on SABC the night before the uh, 2016 election, and I thought that Hillary Clinton was definitely going to win because the polls seemed to suggest that right down to the last wire. And at the end of the day, uh, Donald Trump managed to squeak through uh, a very narrow electoral college victory. But uh, what what is the wild card in all of this is the race factor. Uh, America has never come to terms with its racist past. And Black Lives Matter and the murder of George Floyd on uh, May 25th has dramatized that. But there is still a backlash uh, among particularly non-college educated white Christians uh, in rural areas in the smaller states that I think Trump is planning to play to as he did in 16, although he's making a very strong case. Now, you said average Americans will be at this convention. Well, he's going to bring in some uh, the, 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 the couple that in Missouri armed themselves and stood on their front porch with guns ready to shoot Black Lives Matter demonstrators when they come by. I kid you not, this is a very inflammatory, polarizing candidate, Donald Trump, and he will be speaking every night at this convention, four nights in a row. It's the Donald Trump show. Very, very different, very different from what we've seen in the last week with the Democrats. And uh, there, there are just too many uncertainties right now for me to be very confident. Just as Barack Obama said, people vote as though your life depended on it, because it really does. And just yesterday, the House of Representatives, uh, Professor, approved a bill forbidding the U.S. Postal Services from making any change that would essentially limit service until after the November election. Do you believe that President Trump is seeking to, you know, to sort of uh, sabotage mail service for his political advantage? Of course he is. He's, he's, he would refuse to say whether he'd accept the outcome, which is unheard of in American presidential elections 
election since 1789. Everyone's accepted the results. There have been a couple of contested elections, one in 1876. But by and large, everyone goes along as Al Gore did in 2000 when he, he actually uh, squeaked through in Florida. But what, what Trump has said is he won't accept, he won't guarantee that he'll accept it. And he's already said that if the, uh, if the, if the, the Democrats were allowed to vote freely and fairly, uh, they would win. I mean, he is, he is quite blatant in his, his, his comments about some of this stuff, uh, whether he intends to be or not, I don't know. But his role with regard to the Postal Service is very questionable. So are the voter suppression measures that have been unfolding in Georgia and other states, of course, across the South and other predominantly Republican states, particularly where, where African Americans and Hispanics are voting. They, they have always had the hardest time getting their votes counted, and, they, and the Republicans will do what they can to suppress those votes. So it, it's going to be a very, very tough and, and, and problematic election, and we're not sure when the final count will be uh, tabulated. And in many ways, it reminds me of the kind of elections in Africa I used to observe with the Carter Center, where uh, the incumbent would do everything he could to stay in power. Now, there is uh, President Trump's newly appointed Postmaster General, Louis DeJoy, who is a North Carolina business person and a very prominent Republican donor. Now, in the context of uh, voting by mail, which is under contention, what should we read into this appointment? <laughs> well, you should read into this appointment that Joe Biden just can't win by a slight uh, majority. He's got to win big. There's got to be a sweep. And what I didn't an answer your last question was the House of Representatives passes this bill with regard to the postal abuse of the post, post office by, by DeJoy and with, with Trump's backing. And it will not pass the Senate because the Senate is still controlled by the Republicans. This is an inflection point for the American democracy. And if the Democrats are able to win the White House and the control of the Senate, I think you will see some democratic reforms, which would be quite congenial to South Africa's interests. And South Africa would at least have a country that it could talk to. Uh, it may not always disagree with, it may not always agree with, but with Trump, uh, there there's really isn't much of a relationship, especially with Africa. And so I'm, I'm really quite uh, concerned about this turning point in American democratic development. It's the most important election, certainly since the American Civil War in the 1860s. And uh, I'm, I'm frankly nervous. And, and Barack Obama told us we should be nervous. Mm. Now, President Trump yesterday on Twitter uh, claimed that the Democrats took out the word God uh, out of the Pledge of Allegiance of, at the Democratic National Convention. Well, even though President Trump's own religious conv uh, uh, convictions have often been brought into question, uh, just how important a factor is religion on the campaign trail and ultimately on the elections? Well, religion in the sense that the evangelicals, despite uh, uh, Donald Trump's uh, sexual proclivities and his lack of, as you say, any kind of religious grounding or any ethical grounding at all, they see themselves under siege by an increasingly non-white, pluralistic, diverse America. Uh, the, the, the white majority will be no longer majority by the middle of the century. And so those Christians who want to see America America made great again in their image as they as they and their ancestors like to determine it there is there is an accounting in America that has never been done with regard to racism and it won't even be done by this election if Biden wins because so much of the of the of the racial contract that 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 it maintains the separation of the races in America is implicit housing and job access and educational assets all this has come out in covid you know you saw the disproportionate impact of covid on people of color and particularly african americans uh, there is a reckoning, but I, I will never get it with Donald Trump. What we're going to get is is Christians swallowing hard and ignoring the fact that he, uh, as you remember from the Hollywood tape, is very uh, misogynist and, and abusive of women. They will not uh, uh, note that he is, is, is hardly knows where a church is, much less praise in it. And, but Joe Biden is a very religious guy. He's a very, very devout Catholic, and he always has been, and he's a very devout family man, and he made that very plain. Donald Trump is neither, but 
whites in America are scared and appears to be, or they were in, in 16, and whether or not enough of them will be able to be scared and vote for Donald Trump and hold their nose, and whether Donald Trump can, can, can configure the election so that he wins, uh, uh, somehow get, sneaks through, uh, is the big questions right now that's worth, I think, paying attention to because South Africa is liberal democracy and it, it, it needs more partners that are liberal democracies and the U.S. is on the tipping point. But under the First Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, church and state are formally separate. Should we consider this factor in our analysis? Well, of course you should consider this factor in the analysis. You could also consider the Hatch Act, which says that you can't use federal properties for political purposes, and Donald Trump is going to have the fourth day of this convention with a celebration on the White House lawn, and he's going to accept uh, the nomination for president for a second term at the White House, which is clearly a federal territory. Donald Trump ignores all of the normal um, implicit and explicit Over 200 plus years in the American democracy. It's all about Trump. It will always be about Trump. You know, I, I wrote an article this week that began by, by referring back to Trevor Noah's comparisons of Donald Trump with African dictators. And, you know, the, the, it was overdrawn a bit, but only a bit. Uh, Donald Trump is an egomaniac who wants to stay in power. And he's a big man who wants to stay in power. It's a kind of a state capture. I, I could go on about this, and I won't, but it, it's, it's really quite frightening for, for those uh, like South Africa that are trying desperately hard to create a democracy that's inclusive and diverse. Diverse. It's quite interesting that you've just mentioned state capture and uh, the fact that President Donald Trump will pull all the stops to stay in power. And we, we also saw the Trump administration considering bypassing uh, some very critical and important uh, U.S. regulatory standards to fast track an experimental uh, you know, coronavirus vaccine from the United Kingdom uh, for use in America ahead of the presidential election. Uh, so would that perhaps uh, work in his advantage or is the administration sh shooting itself in the foot? Well, we're only around 70 days away from the election and early voting will begin fairly shortly. Um, it is possible, and, and I know that there's a lot of speculation in the U.S. press, and you referred to it, that he'll pull a vaccine out and, and, and uh, because after all, um, America has been the worst performer with regard to COVID, which is really attributable to lack of federal leadership, uh, the kind of uh, 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 pandemic preparation that the Obama administration had that made, made dealing with Ebola and H1 um, virus is uh, successful um, didn't, didn't apply. COVID's a little different, but still, nevertheless, there's been no federal leadership. And he can't, with 170,000 people already dead and five, um, uh, five million people, five million cases, really uh, uh, talk very uh, confidently about dealing with this unless he pulls a rabbit out of the hat with a, with a, with a vaccine. But I don't think at this stage, I think the, the battle lines are clear. It's between um, pluralistic democracy versus uh, white ethnic nationalism, and that's much more powerful and, and passionate argument, the ethnic nationalist, the tribal argument. And whether or not that will stick to give him a majority in the Electoral College as it did in 2016 is the, is the million dollar question. All right, Professor Stremlau, thank you so much for sharing your analysis with us. We appreciate your time. Thank you. That is political analyst Professor John Stremlau joining us via Skype and he was just sharing, us, uh, sharing with us his analysis on the developments out of the United States. And let's take a quick break. We'll be back with more in a moment. This is The Globe.